This morning Monday, at the early CCSA briefing, we're told of 15,376 new COVID cases nationally, along with 87 deaths exacerbated by the virus. Most new cases are the Indian Delta variant, and of the total, over 1,000 were within the national prison systems. This after a weekend that saw a combined 28,835 new cases in the two-day period, along with 233 deaths. The number of new COVID cases is on a steep upward curve, doubling and tripling weekly. This according to a DDC official, who noted that the infection rate in the capital is levelling off. That's probably, though, because so much of the national allocation of vaccines was reallocated from other provinces to the capital and surrounding areas, leaving many regions going short. And as a result, numbers in other provinces, such as our own, are rising at a rapid rate. With the death count rising too, what has been noted is that in the well-vaccinated regions, whilst numbers remain high, the number of those with the full effect of the virus has lessened. So, once other provinces do get good numbers of vaccines, we could see the same around the country. However, we're told, some in high positions are expected to review even stricter conditions for the general public in high-risk zones this week. A do-not-resuscitate rule has been applied to those over 75 years of age with either AIDS or incurable cancer, along with severe COVID, in at least one hospital. In a statement, the faculty said that due to shortage of medical staff, lack of equipment and overcrowding, doctors responsible for providing treatment will not put some severe cases of COVID-19 on ventilators, but will focus on palliative care for anyone with a living will or where the family is consulted in detail first. This isn't a global first by far and is common in many Western countries, but it is a first for Thailand where Buddhist beliefs have often prevented medical staff from complying in the past with so-called living wills. A living will is, of course, a patient's written request not to be resuscitated when they reach a certain stage at the end of their lives. In Pechaboon, some villages have been isolated and quarantined following the mass breakout of COVID at a chicken processing plant, with most workers being Burmese migrants. Health workers tested nearly 7,500 people there, From the first 3,000, 1,000 showed positive. Test results for the rest have yet to be released. The factory too was closed for several days until cleansed and only staff who passed tests will be allowed to return. In Samutsukon, the governor offered to resign his position unless his provincial teams properly contacted and assisted locals who request that they be admitted for medical treatment in pre-admission centres and isolation hospitals. This as more factories were closed down after a rise in positive testing and over 10 local deaths just in that province at the weekend. In Kanchanaburi, 379 more jailbirds were found to be infected during a prison check, seeing the governor ordering the setting up of a field hospital for those infected in prisons, but with all under strict guard. And the Department of Disease Control confirmed that 15.3 million doses of vaccine have been administered since the start of March through to the 22nd of this month, mostly to the elderly and those with underlying conditions and using Astra, Sinovac and Sinopharm. As that group of people, both Thai and non-Thai, reaches its goal for vaccination, so those aged 18 to 59 will see shots available soon, perhaps in grades, such as 50 up, 40 up and then 30 up and so on. Today is a national holiday to celebrate the start of the Buddhist Lent, which began at the weekend, with most temple-goers recommended to remain at home and follow services on television. Meanwhile at home and over the weekend we saw a staggering increase in local cases. The province reported over 1,400 new cases in the two-day period. And this morning, Monday, another new high for the province, 867 new cases of which 210 are in Banglamung, 241 Sila Cha, 155 Chonburi City and 52 Satahip. Despite the city being super quiet over the weekend and the curfew strictly governed by authorities, at least three major vehicle accidents occurred, all at high speed, and the guess is that many were speeding home after realising that they wouldn't make it home before curfew. 
Curfew begins at 9 in Pattaya and the province, with businesses ordered to close at 8 to allow customers and staff time to get home safely. So-called roadblocks set up to monitor and control traffic from the region have at least at one spot become simply a check and no request for documents or reason for travel. The Chonburi to Rayong province main routes managed by Rayong police don't ask any questions and simply ask drivers to scan a QR code when passing through. Nevertheless, motorways and main arteries were very quiet over the weekend and travel was minimal. And that American man who threw a fit at another expat who asked him to wear a mask while queuing at a Mexican fast food outlet, well, the videos of his pathetic rant went viral. Immigration police decided to seek him out and quickly took the wind from his sails. Nabbed at his Pratumnak condo, the man, named only as 33-year-old Clarence, confessed to his poor behaviour. Well, he didn't have much choice and was duly fined an undisclosed amount after admitting that he was wrong, behaved badly and would adhere to the rules from now on. And of course, he wore a mask during his arrest and journey to the police station and questioning there. Sales of our Fabulous 103 t-shirts have done very well over the weekend and we'd really like to thank everyone who placed orders. They're being sold to raise funds to keep us going. And with plenty in stock, we're not going to run out soon. So if you haven't ordered one yet, visit our website, alwayspatia.com and see the video of how you can keep in touch with us and help us at the same time. And with the Met Office promising highs today of around 31 degrees, dropping down to 27 and a good chance of rain at any time, Local and national news today from Fabulous 103 FM and Fabulous Patia Media Group. And to get a notification every time we release another bulletin or program, like and subscribe to our channel, Fabulous Patia Media Group, by using the link below.